So it's true. I am feeling like I'm becoming a local. Well, at least that's what my friends told me today at brunch. Well, they didn't exactly say that, but I felt very welcome. I felt very loved. And it's one of those things that I'm really excited on this journey of being in South Africa, right? So welcome to the stream. If you're new, welcome. My name is Ashley. On my channel, I talk about my experience of living, moving, and doing business here on the continent of Africa. If you're not new, welcome back. Um, I'm keeping my word. We're going live every day until uh, August, until the Africa Investors Academy Summit. And I know yesterday I said I was going to go live at 5.30, but we're going live at 5 because the lighting is good and the children are eating. And so I'll probably have more time with y'all. So welcome. Um, greet me in the chat if you would like to be greeted. This is a members only, excuse me, this is a subscriber only chat. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you can chat. Come say hi. Let me know where you're joining from welcome like this uh like the content and share it with someone who would find value in it as well support the channel right so i'm so happy and grateful that you're subscribed you're sharing the content i think last week i saw we had over 250 shares which was amazing and so that is really valuable because it shares the story it shares the vision that um, that I have for the channel, that I have for myself, my family, you know, my vision. So I'm really excited about that. And I also really appreciate um, gifts to the channel, right? Gifts to the work that we're doing um, because it's a lot of work. It takes work. It takes time. As I mentioned, my girls are having dinner. I'm here with y'all, right? So um, I wanted to talk about what it's like to become a local, Right. And I would like to say Africa, but I'm currently in South Africa. So I'm going to speak about South Africa because Africa is a continent, right? Made of 55 countries and there's cultural differences, but there are several similarities that include community, that include relationships. And I found that the best way to be successful integrating into a new country is to really spend time understanding the people of a country, to understand the culture, to understand the history. And South Africa has a very dynamic history. Um, it's, a, it's a country comprised of people from all over the world, but there are more people from more African nations than any other country in Africa here in South Africa. And so that means there's a lot of different languages spoken, a lot of different practices that happen. And so the best way that I have been able to really integrate and become comfortable is to be uncomfortable in learning, humbling myself and just, you know, taking it easy. Um, I spend a lot of time at events that include like, you know, going to art shows, going to theater, going to museums. And I really love that for me. And getting opportunities to go convene with friends is always the best. So we're going to talk about my experience today. I got invited to a birthday party. It was the perfect experience. A lunch with ladies on a Tuesday afternoon with champagne, bubbles, cheese, and all of the accoutrement. It was excellent. And so we'll talk about it. So welcome. Hi, Nanette from Mexico. You're gonna visit Joburg the very first time in February. Fantastic, welcome. Um, yeah, let me know where you're joining from. We've got 18 of y'all here. So come and say hello in the chat. Let me know where you're joining from. If you want to be greeted, say hi. Just talk to me. Talk to me and be sure to like this stream, okay? Be sure to like it. Um, share it with yeah, someone sure who would like bail, who would find value. See, I'm turning it on because I'm trying to find out where the likes. 
I need everyone to like the stream. That's free. So that shows me that you value the content, that you value the community, and that you pr appreciate us spending time together. So I know I haven't been doing a lot of lives, um, but I want to do more. And I want to know that they're valuable and that the community appreciates it. So you do that by liking this content. You do that by sharing the content. And you do that by showing us some love, super chats, cash apps, uh, PayPal. We got some PayPal love yesterday. So I want to shout out. Matter of fact, yes, let's do that until we get the likes up. I will shout out our family members that showed love on PayPal. So I want to shout out John. John Odi Odi Odiambo. Did I say it right, John? John Odiambo and Patrick Oladokun Asante Sana thank you Siabonga or I don't know if that's like plural so y'all get me together in the comments I'm happy to be gotten together with my Zulu um but yes let's please get the likes up there's 25 of us so let's get to 20 likes let's get to 20 likes I appreciate y'all before we get back to the content, Sir jo Sir Koj Saubona, Giapila, oh no, Njani, <laughs> you say Giapila, Wena Njani, and Giapila, right? Did I say it properly, right? Delisa, hello, welcome. Oh, you're going to be in Durban, August 14th. Wonderful. Nina Bell, Nini Bell is in Durban, so she's welcoming you. Uh, Impact Custom T-shirts. Hi, from ATL. Welcome. Deliza from Jersey. All right, Deliza. Natural. Oh, living natural for life. Hello from Texas. Hello. So we got people from all over, mostly my U.S. fam and my South African family. Hello from Texas. Hello. Welcome. Let's get the likes up. Wonderful. I appreciate you. That's free. Warbucks, good morning. Oh, my Zulu is outstanding. Yes. Oh, thank you. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> Saumona. Right? Yebo. Njani. Giapila. Muena Njani. Yes. Hey. The little bit. Correct. Don't come for my little bit. Step by step. Pole pole. Okay? Asante. I'm going to mix it in there. I'm going to give you all the Bantu languages. Right? So I appreciate you. Thank you all for joining the stream. Thank you for getting the likes up. Um, I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Y'all, you know, I've been doing Zulu lessons. I haven't been able to connect with my Zulu teacher now for a few weeks because there's been so much change. We've been moving, didn't have internet for a while. Now that I have internet, it's been cold. I really been feeling it. Um, and I've been focused on my work, you know, getting the uh, Africa Investors Academy Summit together. So, Today was really good because I really needed today. I really needed to get out. I have been in the house working, heads down in my gown, right? That y'all call robes, in my gown every day at this desk, um, cranking out stuff for the community. And while I'm so grateful to have been able to have that escape, I really needed to feel reconnected to um, to the country. And, and quite frankly, I think, you know, the cold, being inside, it just had me in a funk. Um, and getting outside today, it was beautiful, having a beautiful dining experience with some amazing ladies, um, hearing stories of sisterhood, of South African sisterhood. It was beautiful. And you you need that, right? We need that when we are making a return to the continent and integrating into uh, a new culture, a new community, a new country. Um, I'm really focused. 
I can focus and hunker down all day with the likes of them. I also, we all need community. We all need community, especially when we're making that transition. And so today was beautiful, right? I have had some dinner experiences since being here. And, you know, there's a lot of us here, us meaning African-Americans. And we have our community, right? We got our group chats. We're here on YouTube sharing content. Um, and, you know, I think the complexity of our history makes it so that we struggle in unity in, in wherever we are, right? The, the idea of Black unity is a beautiful thing. The reality of it is a different story. And um, we come with so much from the West. And it's so important. And I think the spiritual part of us returning and getting here, we get so fulfilled by creating um, relationship with our African brothers and sisters. And so I recognize that part of that desire um, was missing because I hadn't really been in community with my folks. And so today, again, it was just a beautiful experience. Had a birthday dinner for a new friendship that is growing. I haven't seen her in probably a month since right before it got really cold, but she invited me to her dinner and there were about 12 of us there. And during her, not her dinner, her lunch, um, we all went around the table. She went around the table to introduce us to everyone that was there, the importance of who they were to her um, and how she also reflected on, the, on their relationship with them. Yes. Chapati papana. No. But I finished my vegetables. No, that's for me. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, you can have chai. Okay, thank you. I'm getting Just a little, no. I'm feeling a little things. Um, I forgot where I was. So let's get into the comments and I'll come back to that. Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Oh, thank you so much. I love you. We love you as well. Um, wonderful. So y'all are just connecting in the comments. I love it. Oh, I will let them know you said hello. <laughs> They're having dinner now. Um, but yeah, so becoming a local, what does that look like? Um, what does that look like? That looks like really just paying attention. Uh, I don't, everybody does this in a different way. So I'm not gonna criticize a person for how they're doing a thing because how they do a thing works for them. And how I'm doing this thing is potentially working for me, right? So um, a few ways that I feel you know, that I'm becoming a local in South Africa is really putting myself out there, being open to new relationships. So one of the things that I've noticed in the community of women that I'm in that are travelers from all over the continent, right? So we're not just from America, from other parts of Africa, Tanzania, Egypt, Ethiopia. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I feel like I'm coming down with something, guys. <laughs> I feel it. I'm going to take something, some ginger shots. Um, we all are very open. So we've realized that we have to be open. Ooh, something's happening. Ooh, oh, something's happening. <laughs> we realize that we have to be very open uh, to make friends, right? Vulnerability is really important. And um, putting ourselves out there. So I join our WhatsApp groups. I join some Facebook groups. I meet a lot of people through YouTube, right? I've met a lot of people through um, through uh, Instagram and just sharing. Being willing to share on social media has given me an opportunity to meet people and taking advantage of that and meeting people. Um, and when I meet them being open, right? Sharing my story, sharing my why. Why did I move across the world to South Africa from the US? 
and being honest and being open, but most importantly, being, being vulnerable. And vulnerability is not a weakness. Vulnerability is a superpower. And I think when you decide to make this move, you're more connected to people that do it than you realize. Because we all have experienced some type of thing that makes us say, oh, I want to try something different. And that thing could be, <laughs> there's so many things, right? Feeling disconnected from friends, feeling disconnected from family, maybe feeling disconnected from society, um, being exhausted with society, being exhausted with the, the consistent corporate culture that's toxic, um, you know, just having a desire while also being afraid of the unknown, right? Um, so all of these things are real, but once you're able to make that leap, you then realize, wow, there are other people who have done this too. And oftentimes we have so much in common. But one of the things that I also notice here in South Africa that I love is because we share so many similar experiences um, of racial segregation, right? There is a specific trauma that comes with racial segregation. There is a spiritual um, experience that happens with that, especially as a super being, a supreme being, right? Having had that experience in your bloodline, there is uh, something that is very similar. And so South Africans and African Americans just share so much in common, you know, including a little trauma, if I'm being honest. Okay. So, um, and I don't call it a trauma bond. I think it's different because there's an intellectual awareness that comes um, with with that. Now, in every space is maybe not. There might be some people that are kind of, you know, um, still in that space and that's okay, right? Your Everyone's journey looks different. But I think once you can have that experience and then you can evolve out of that, I think the difference is in South Africa, the change is tangible. The change exists in the constitution. The change exists in the leadership even though there are still remnants, right? There are still these underlying effects um, and remnants. The change is tangible, where for Black Americans, in my opinion, it's like all a gaslight, right? It's a full-on gaslight. It's, it's like, yeah, we're making some changes, but not for real, for real. You know, there are these things that are blatantly um, not for the progression. And so, you know, again, that's my opinion, speaking from my experience, but those similarities make it so that the relationship for African Americans and South Africans, it just feels so natural, so comfortable, so comforting. We can talk about ancestors together. We can talk about, um, spiritual, you know, spiritual awareness, self-awareness, being the light in each other's lives, being the light for others, holding space. I can use those words and be heard and be seen. And yeah, that's, that's the benefit of coming to a place where language is not an immediate issue, right? And so also learning how to communicate and say names and, you know, greetings and those things, making that effort as well. As, as do I feel like my South African brothers and sisters when they understand I'm American and they try to speak to me in American. <laughs> and that's always fun as well. So, you know, that is really important for me. Um, it's really important for me. And that's something that I have personally um, invested in, right? Like I mentioned, I have, I'm taking Zulu lessons. It's on pause right now, but I value my teacher so much that I said, let's, let me get my mind right. Let me get myself together so that I can dedicate and devote that time to her and the, the energy that she was giving to me. But the fact that even my 
teacher, my Zulu teacher is offering to help me because I have a desire to learn Zulu. Um, and just exchange for time, you know, that in itself is just a beautiful exchange of love and energy that for me, I'm learning so much and I'm gaining so much. And I feel like it's just an opportunity for me to connect on a, you know, language is very spiritual, right? It's a, it's a spiritual exchange of energy that, um, yeah, it feels good. So when we link up, um, but yes, so doing that, my girls go to a South African owned school, right? So a black South African owned school where they learn African history, African geography, um, African language. That's really, really important. It's really important to me. I don't communicate and get involved with South African politics. That's probably very un-South African, but because, you know, I am not a citizen. And so because I am new to the country, I am still learning and, you know, I'm observing, but I support the people of South Africa and their passion and their patriotism for their country because they've got a beautiful place to, to be appreciative of and like to protect. I saw a stat today that came through that I want to share and it talked about where people were coming from uh, as retirees. And so I think in one of the last videos I shared, it's really important for South Africans to be buying land because foreigners are coming from all over the world to buy land. So if you can get tribal land or you can get land um, or you have land, get your land. Please get your land because foreigners are coming to this country and they have an interest in your land. Right. So let me find this article that was came out in the uh, business tech, uh, business tech blog. I don't know if it's an actual blog or media, uh, traditional media outlet, but it talked about thousands of foreigners flocking to South Africa and where are they from? Top destination, the UK. <laughs> Second top destination, China. Third top, I don't remember. But the fourth was the US. Um, I think it's because I'm doing the live. It's not allowing the article to load, but we'll give it some time. Um, either way, you know, those folks that I listed, they don't necessarily need to focus on integration for their happiness, right? Like they can just do what they want to do, live in their areas, do what they want. Um, but for those of us that have a real interest in building for the long term, um, our job is to understand, right? Um, a lot of people have asked me, so what are you going to do? What are you going to do with South Africa? You know, what are you pre planning to? I'm planning to listen. I want to understand. I want to share when I'm asked to share and help when I'm asked to help. But I don't know enough to come in and say, this is actually what I'm going to do. Um, for the people of South Africa, because right now I need the people of South Africa to, to pour into me, to share with me the experiences that they've had, to help me understand the challenges that they're experiencing in their country, or to share with me the value of relationships, love and language, arts and music that they're experiencing, right? I need South Africa right now more than South Africa needs me. So I don't know what I'm doing, right, directly. I know that I'm here to build something beautiful with a beautiful people in a beautiful country. And what exactly that looks like looks different, right? So the Africa Investors Academy that I'm, I'm working with mostly people that want to come to the continent, that they're not here and they wanna build something 
my goal is to eventually make this curriculum available to people here in South Africa because entrepreneurship is for everyone. Everyone deserves to know how to be and run their own business. Now, that's my personal opinion of economic independence, but I think that for people, especially as companies look to technology and AI to do a lot of the jobs that people are doing, people need to have a skill set to be able to share their genius and monetize that and enterprise themselves. So this is one platform, right? The Africa Investors Academy is one platform that I fully intend on opening up to South Africans. And that means I've got to get the proper documents in place to be able to do that, right? And so we're working on that. Um, so yes, that is um, one of the things. But for the most part, my job right now is to really learn and understand the culture, the people, the food, the music, the history, all of that. And I'm loving every minute of it. So I really appreciate you all for joining. Let me head into the comments. Um, excuse me, I'm just snorting. I think I'm coming down with something. So <laughs> thanks guys for your patience. I'm going to pop off soon. I need to eat my dinner, but I want to make sure that you, that I answer your questions. Paul, I knew you can thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate your welcome. Yeah, I don't know that that's true, Warbucks, but I can't speak for other people, right? Y'all get into that in the comments. I'm not familiar with people feeling like they can make change to people, but for any of that, that's just not the way to go, right? Because um, that's never a good way to enter into a relationship. Hi, Nathaniel from Joburg. <laughs> Don't be worried, Sia. Let's like keep it positive. You know, let's keep it positive. Let's speak affirmation. Let's speak power. Let's speak light. Let's speak love. Let's speak exceptionalism. Let's speak all of the, you know, power, all of that, right? Because um, <laughs> that's beautiful. Yes, today is Madiba Day, right? And you got to tell me about this. Tell me about this because I know that today is um, Madiba Day. The girl celebrated at school. I'm not really familiar with how it's celebrated because I was at brunch and I didn't really. So come get me in the comments. Come get me. I appreciate it. Hi, Chris B. Yes, the U.S. is in the top five. Can you believe it? If you look at those direct flights from Atlanta and Newark, you don't see us brown people on those flights. Um, but yes, it is. U.S. is in the top five. The U.K. was number one. Number two was China. I don't know who number three was. But U.S. was in the top five. Let's see if we can get it to open now. Thank you. My hair looks lovely and voluminous. Thank you. Thank you. I've been working through this weather, this winter weather, trying to take me out my skin too. I've been using castor oil, egg, avocado oil, honey. <laughs> it's been a process. <laughs> Do I have an idea of how many Black Americans are living in SA? Let's see, Ruben, did you like the stream? Did you like the stream? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd say anywhere from three to 500. That's a guesstimate. We are actually uh, at the African Center for the Study of the United States. We're actually putting together a full survey of this information to be able to provide accurate and updated data for the purposes of the diaspora 
um, and our return. So good question, Ruben. Good question. I appreciate that. Hi, Patricia from New York. I'm good. How are you? Welcome. Yeah, there's no fixing. You need fixing if you're coming from America. Hello. You definitely need fixing if you're coming from the West. I can't speak for the UK can because I'm not going to come for y'all for, for that. But I will come for my fellow American folk because we have so much trauma, so much trauma, damage, baggage, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, we have that. And so the idea of us coming to a place and fixing anything before we fix ourselves is a disaster. It's a disastrous approach and it doesn't work. And the people that attempt to do that thing are the ones that always end up on the YouTubes complaining about a country, about how it they scammed them and it didn't work out and we got to go back and this and that. And, oh, the people here aren't telling you the truth. Those are the folks that think they're going to fix a thing, that think they're going to change a thing, a process, an experience around that they're going to somehow bring this capitalistic, modern, efficient, professional approach to Africa where they themselves need that work. They themselves need to be fixed, right? So that's good, Hendrix. Keep that energy. Oh, lovely. Lovely Tandi. Tandi Mbano. Did I say it right? Tandi Mbano. I'm learning my Tandi. Tandi Mbano. <laughs> lovely. Thank you for joining. Oh, 67 minutes of my time. Okay. So somebody said my Madiba 18. Okay, so I offer 67 minutes of my time in commemoration of 67 years that Madiba dedicated to liberation. Oh, so this is my six. Yes, thank you. This is my six. Okay, so we're going to go for 67 minutes. I can't go for 67 minutes. So I'll come back. <laughs> I'll come back. I'll come back. Um, or maybe I can do that through IG, right? Last year, 5,000 African-Americans left the U.S. and migrated to Africa. I believe it. And I also believe that probably 3,000 of them went back to the U.S., unfortunately. Um, probably 3,000 of them went. I'm just checking the likes, y'all. <laughs> um, yeah, let's get the likes up. We've got 60 of you guys. So let's get the likes up, please, if you have. Join the stream. I appreciate you like this. Share it with someone else who would find value in it. Okay. Um, but yeah, I do. I think that there are even more people that didn't that that came and left, unfortunately, or that migrated, and that's okay. That is okay because it's not for everyone. Some people don't prepare, so they have to return. They have to move around. Being outside of your country is not easy. Um, the concept of citizenship and visas is not an American concept. Like we don't think that way. So sometimes those can be challenging. Um, yeah, I'm, my nose is really running y'all. I think I'm going to be a little sick. So I believe it. And I believe that number is going to continue to go higher. How is the dating scene in SA? I knew someone was going to ask me this question. So I don't know. I have gone on dates. I have met people being out at coffee shops or out at a brunch or out at the, a restaurant. I have met people. And the gentlemen are very nice, um, very respectful, very generous. Um yeah, I am dating with intention. 
So that means I am dating with the intention of a long-term relationship and marriage. I have daughters, so that means that I am very intentional about being with someone who has worked through many experiences in their past and is willing to receive and give love as well. And so that is a process um, for, I think, men in general. But I think, um, you know, the older you get, the more children you have, the more professionally accomplished you are, like you're just going and you're just in it and you're just living day to day. And sometimes we don't realize the the wounds that we carry or the baggage that we carry until we hit like a brick wall. And I think um, for men, you know, they're in their work, they're in their bag. And so um, it's been fun. Like I met some really, really fun men um, with the fact that I am dating with intention. Like I'm not just looking to be on the dating scene. So I'm not on the scene. So I wouldn't really know how the scene is. But as far as the men that I've met, I've met some really great gentlemen. Um, and I look forward to meeting many more. Right? Awesome. Thanks, Oyekade. Did I say it properly? I hope so. I know. I got the sniffles out of nowhere. Yes, this is so important. Absolutely should be willing to learn. Um, and you'll pick it up. Yeah, I mean, listen. There is a place for everybody. Everyone does not need to be in one country. That's the beauty of the world. Honestly, everyone doesn't need to return to Africa. If it's in your heart, if it's in your desires to do that thing, then cool. I've had a client who came here. She wasn't feeling it. We worked together for over a year. She was not feeling South Africa. She loved the idea of it. She came here. She gave it a try, her best try. She wasn't feeling it. She moved to Grenada and she found her happy and I'm so happy for her. So it, you know, I have people that have moved to Tanzania and they love it, right? They couldn't think of living anywhere else. I moved to Tanzania. I loved it. I didn't want to live there full time. I still love it. I travel there regularly. I'll be there next month. Um, but I love South Africa. And I love the idea of potentially living in Tanzania part time and maybe even other parts of the continent. Right. So business is a thing in Nigeria. Business is a thing in Egypt. Business is a thing in Kenya. It is a thing in Morocco. It's a thing in South Africa. It's everywhere. Um, but the, the barriers to entry can be different in each country. And so the types of business models that you're looking to build depend. Um, and that's cool. Like, if you want to do Nigeria, do it, sis. Do it, Lauren. If you want to do Ghana, do it. There is no room or time for this, like, continental wars. Like, this is foolish. Stop the madness. We are one people. And wherever you want to be on this continent and you are building for the growth of the continent of Africa, salute to you. Um Love this. Okay. Yes. And so I did some things. My girls did some things for their school, took some things, but absolutely. I am going to commit to this. There's a reason for them to go back, have anything to do with their choice of which African country they migrated to. Sometimes, sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. Um, sometimes it has to do with financial planning. Sometimes it has to do with feeling homesick. It takes two years statistically to get comfortable in a new country. It's getting dark. So my light is getting lower, but it takes two years to get comfortable in a new country. Even when you move to a new city in a new state, 
So that two years can take a toll on you emotionally. You could start to miss friends, miss family. And if you stay in that low vibrational space that is lacking gratitude, because gratitude shifts everything. Once you become grateful for what you've done, how you've done it, where you are, it can shift your mindset. But some people, they don't get there, right? They kind of stay in this place of complaining about what isn't the same or what doesn't look or feel like they thought it was going to look or feel like how people are different than they expected or the challenges versus looking at the beauty of it. Um, sometimes it can be language. Sometimes it can be just pure lack of preparation. Um, sometimes it can be legal reasons. Like you just, there's so many reasons. Um, but I think the majority of these reasons go into preparation and probably just homesickness, right? So the last video that I did where I titled it, I hate this country, what do I do now? Um, it's a sentiment that a lot of people are having that I've worked with or that are currently kind of in community, I'm in community with, and they're complaining all the time about what, you know, and it's like, do you really hate it? Or are you just so stuck in this place of complaining? Right. And you're just missing the things or you just are not accepting what is. And this is a place that does things differently. So there's a lot of different reasons, Mo Africa, but I appreciate you asking that question. Uh, my snipples. So Barnes the Wink, thank you for this name. I've been named a few things. So Lorato. This is my third name. I've been called Lesedi. I've been called Tando. I've been called, those are my three, right? So at this point I have three names. Which one do I pick? Okay. Or should I just communicate my name so nobody gives me another name? <laughs> um, how do you say lights in Zulu? Tell me guys, cause I wanna say it. I'm gonna say it. Cause I loved it better in Zulu. It sounded beautiful. Nkanyiso. Nkanyiso. It was my name. So Nkanyiso, Naledi, Tando, and Nalorato. So I have four names. So which one do I pick? <laughs> Thanks, Fish Don. Hi, John. I gave you a shout out earlier. Shout out to John for the support, supporting the stream yesterday. Support our stream, like this channel, share it with someone who finds value in it. I really appreciate you, John, and your beautiful message. Thank you so much for your support. Daddy. Oh, Lord, here comes the children. Hi. Hi. Can you turn on the light? It's getting dark in here. Okay. Welcome, Skydex. Like the stream, share it. It's over there. I'm going to get ready to hop off because my nose is running and I've got to eat. Yes, SLK, this is the list only for retirees, right? It doesn't include the other people, correct? Um, it's just, but this is people, these are people that are coming and they are purely just coming. Most of them are not intentional about building here in the continent. So what I'm saying is they're just retired. They come in, they're like, I'm going to live here. I'm going to shop here. I'm going to eat here. I'm going to consume and live the rest of my life, right? Um, versus am I going to build, you know? And so it's just keeping that in mind. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much. Yes, uh-oh. Hey. Excuse me. It's something going on. Oh, I feel it. I'm going to have to hop off. But we're going to keep going as long as possible. Um, yes, it is cold in SA in August and warm in Tanzania. I think it's the end of the winter. August is the end of the winter. Today was beautiful, though. Today was a beautiful day. I was outside, so that's probably why I went outside. Because it was so nice and now I'm probably messed up because I've been inside the whole time. Um, but I rebuke that. 
you know, we're, we call in health and healing. <laughs> Wonderful. I appreciate you, Caswell. Welcome. Have I? No, but I have had meetings uh, close. I need to make a trip, right? I probably should do that. Um, thanks for that reminder. The South Africa fast internet. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not the techie person to ask, but I do have pretty fast internet, I think. I don't have any issues with my internet, but there's so many providers. Fiber, so it's fiber. So I know that's a good thing, uh, but there's a ton of internet service providers. Yes. So if internet is what you need, South Africa has got it for you. <laughs> okay, Patricia. Yeah. Well, you know. Is this is, is this happening? Are you having this experience? Patricia, I want to make sure I get through these. If so, I'm really sorry. I hope uh that, that gets better for you. Okay. Okay, so these are the, the these are the, the the votes. Go for Cañizo or Lorato. And then Mabu Bessi says pick Cañizo, but as a woman the name should be No Ku Kanya. Did I say it right? No kukanya. Okay, let me write that down. No kukanya. Or Lorato. Okay. I'm going to have like five names, y'all. <laughs> okay, this is a great question. Why do I think people coming from the diaspora appreciate more what our motherland has to offer more than those who migrate to Europe from the motherland. I think it's always the saying, you want what you don't have. Um, and so it all, the grass always looks greener. Um, I think that people from the mother, you know, from the continent are really successful in America. They're really successful in parts of the UK. And I think one of those things is because there is a, a, a confidence, right? There's a confidence of who they are, where they come from, their language, their culture, their religion. And they don't deal with the mental warfare that takes place for people in America. So much of the Black American plight is mental. I said it. Have things happened? Absolutely. Have things happened to our people? Is slavery a big issue? Absolutely. It happened to us 400 years ago, 500 years ago, and they will never let you forget it. Why? Because they won't apologize for it. They'll treat you like it never happened. They'll create celebrations like Juneteenth that aren't really celebrations. They create a mental, uh, psychological uh, abusive relationship. Essentially, that's what it is. I mean, it's it's like it it's it's it it's what is the word that I'm looking for? Um, it's delusion, right? It's mental. You know, Black History Month is the shortest month of the year. Every time Malcolm X's birthday comes around, it's the Black woman is the most disrespected. I mean. There's constant and consistent messaging that reminds Black people of their lesser position in that country. And so that's a mental uh, energetic depletion that happens in the community of Black people. And so there's only so much you can pass, you can ascend to because you're constantly reminded of your oppression, right? And so Africans don't have that same sentiment. They like, that didn't happen to me, so I'm good. So they don't experience that energetic depletion. They don't experience that um, because they know, 
they know they come from a land where they are the majority, where they had, a, you know, granted, have continental Africans experienced trauma? Absolutely. 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 But they don't live in a society that's constantly picking at them, right? It's like this prodding of African Americans that happens regularly. The Supreme Court justice the decision to remind you, oh, we're doing away with affirmative action. Just if you thought you were equal in this country. Now let's see. You know, it's like, let's do away with books in the school to talk about critical race theory. Let's not talk about it. You know, that is gaslighting. It's psychological abuse. Right. And so um, we don't experience that here on the continent. So when you just don't want to deal with racism, people leave those environments. And that's not enough, in my opinion, to really be sustainable in Africa. It can't just be racism because racism does not exist. But there are other things that do that will make you say, oh, OK, this is different. So that's my long answer. I hope that was helpful. Um, but I think, you know, people see the West as opportunity. They see it as a, as an economic opportunity and people tend to do, you know, Africans do very well when they migrate out. Um, then they do quickly understand that they then become black. Right. And so sometimes it's temporary. Sometimes it's longer than they intend for it to be. But I think for both of us, we want what we don't have, right? Um, and so we, we we make that exchange accordingly. Oh, Tandika is your name. Okay, come on, ta yes, yes, you know. I don't know, someone tell us in the chat or maybe someone has already what it means. I've. Someone did tell me loving, I think, is what it means. Loving, nurturing. I think so. Wonderful. Yeah, that's beautiful. Hi, Claudia. Welcome. How was my experience of snow in South Africa? I didn't like it. I was not pleased. <laughs> I was not pleased. I was looking out the window, this very window right here, like WTF, what is happening? Um, I then became a bit concerned about the people in um, makeshift house, makeshift communities that don't have heating, you know, that don't have uh, electricity, right? I think that day there wasn't any load shedding. I don't know, maybe there was, but. I was just, I, I wasn't feeling it. I know people were excited to see it um, because they hadn't seen it ever before. So that's okay, you know. But for me, I wasn't, I wasn't so excited. Luckily, it was beautiful today outside. Absolutely. It will eventually catch up to you. And it's catching up to people that they don't even realize it's catching up to them. They don't understand that their anxiety medication is attached to the oppression. They don't understand that their blood pressure medication is attached to the oppression. They don't understand that they're making one third of what a white man is making, and that's a tied to the oppression. Or that the, uh, I don't know, the schedule, the vaccination schedule for their children is contingent upon their, you know, abilities to do whatever they need to do. I mean, all of those things are mental oppression. Now, the, the the vaccination situation is a bit different and maybe I'm going off on a tangent, but those type of systems that, you know, the body was meant to heal itself and the earth is meant to heal the body. So when you can be in an environment where the soil is rich and the food can heal you, that type of freedom is undescribable. But when you live in an environment where the soil is dead, you cannot trust the food. And then you must inject your body with said medicine 
right? It's like, that's oppression. That is anti-biological to what we are as humans. So all of that stuff, right? Um, and I know South Africans, you know, there are different medical trials happening here, you know, and again, like this is me speaking for America. I'm not speaking about what's happening, but I do know that the earth is rich here. You can you can heal yourself with with food. You can heal yourself with herbs. Um, even just going to the stores here is totally different, right? Going to the stores and being able to get um, herbal, what is it? Um, oils and like there's just certain medicine that's available in the stores here where I can get certain vitamins like in the regular store I can get um I cannot think of the name that I'm looking for but like natural oils and different things like that that I would have to go to a whole specialty store to get to where I can just be in the grocery store and get those things what banks can we work with here in America that are recognized also in SA? So all banks, that's an interesting question. If you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can connect with me via the link in the description to book a call. And I can talk to you specifically about how to financially prepare, but banks aren't, it's not, banks aren't recognized in other countries currency is. So if you have a dollar, you can always transfer a dollar into a currency of another country, right? So, but if you want to get specific information on how to financially prepare for a move or a long-term stay, you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Patricia, you got some fast hands, huh? You are in the chat heavy. <laughs> Um, hi, Sibol. I did see that. I did. I did. I love to hear that. I love that. And that would make sense because UK are the highest retirees uh, here in South Africa. So them voting it the best country in the telegram sounds really interesting and very significant. Um, and that, yes, Cape Town was the best city in the world. I saw that. Um, hmm. South African foods, love pop, um, love pop, love stew. I think our Shengazi, which is auntie in Swahili, we call her, our helper made some chicken stew today, dumpling, shakalaka, love it. I had some sausage at a braai a couple weeks ago, yum. My experiences of the malls, love them. I try to stay out of them because I don't, the way my bank account is set up, <laughs> no, but I'm very intentional about making some big investments this year. So I do minimize my shopping, but I had to do shopping for the weather because I did not have winter clothes. So I think even this like faux leather jacket I bought from Zara at uh, the Mall of Africa. I've got some other like South African brands as well. I can't think of them, the, the names of them, but I got this really cute like workout outfit from a South African brand at Mall of America. I mean, ugh, Mall of Africa. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't been to Santon Mall that much. Um, I really just go to Mall of Africa and um, shop at like some of the local malls around for the kids. I can do Mr. Price for them. I could do H&M, oh, Rosebank, The Zone. Yeah, so I mean, the malls are next level. The malls are very luxurious. I know, sir. Coach, don't don't come for me. I know Mall of America because we have a Mall of America in America, but it is nothing in comparison to Mall of Africa, which was awarded like the best development, like commercial real estate development in the world. I think in 2022, beautiful. They have concerts there. It's great. The restaurants are amazing. Um, yeah, so I love it. Um, so yeah, those are my experiences. My, my mindset makes the experience of South Africa so different. You see through the illusion, the illusion of it being great. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that there's always these beautiful 
things that we see um, that sometimes others don't see. And I do think that mindset makes everything different. Gratitude changes everything, everything. If you can find something to be grateful for in the midst of a storm, yeah, you can make it through. Brian, so I do, I do communicate with family back home. They're doing well. Some of them, you know, really wish to come visit. Some of them really wish to, you know, eventually maybe move. I think it's still kind of this fear, still kind of this unknowing. I have some people that are coming to visit this year. Um, they do try to get me to come back and visit. And the plane that goes from South Africa to America also has a route that comes from there to here. So because they haven't been here, I encourage them to return um, to the continent because we've already been there. We've lived there. We've done that, been there, done that. You know, our goal is to experience, is to experience the rest of the continent, the rest of the world. Um, so I don't see us returning anytime soon, but I do see us welcoming them um, when they're ready to, when they're ready to come visit. So I appreciate you guys so much. Thanks for joining. We're right at an hour. I appreciate you. If you have not, please like the stream, uh, share it with someone who would find value with it. And we're going live again tomorrow at about five o'clock. So join me there. I haven't figured out what we're going to talk about, but maybe I'll put up a poll and we can, um, go from there and share what it is that um, we'll talk about tomorrow. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.